you're ready, I am rolling. My name is Christine Haddad. I am the teacher librarian at Johnson School in Bethel, Connecticut. We are a fourth and fifth grade school. And today's lesson was on uh, finding the good stuff on the internet. Them for you. Okay. We want to understand the decisions you made in planning for this lesson and how it fits into the unit and year. How does this lesson connect to and build on students' prior skills and knowledge? What was taught before the lesson and what will come after it? Uh, well, throughout the year, the students come for research lessons and uh, subsequent lessons build on the previous. So they've already had instruction and practice on uh, asking meaningful research questions that are researchable and able to be answered, uh, focusing their research. The pr lesson prior to this was about not being fooled by websites and it was actually was titled uh, not everything on the internet is true. So I had them researching using a fake website that they didn't know was fake. They had to kind of come to that realization as they were gathering information. So this lesson was then a follow-up to that. If not everything on the internet is true, then how do I find what is true? And I wanted to introduce them to the databases that we have at our exposure at school and for them to know that, you know, we've talked about vocabulary, particularly uh, the word reliable comes up very often. And I want them to get into the habit of using their reliable sources, such as databases. And then further lessons will be um, about more reliable sources, like using books that are so often forgotten, and um, how to pretty much be an internet detective and I'll teach them the skills and strategies that they need to determine whether or not a site is reliable, such as bias and looking at the about information and finding out why the website was made and who's the expert behind it, are they an expert at all. Um, all very necessary skills for the assessments that are going to, be going to be coming up and just throughout their educational careers, they're going to need to find reliable information and they need to be taught the skills as to how to do that. Is this text used in this lesson part of a sequence of text designed to build skills and knowledge? If so, give an example of other texts that form this sequence. Uh, the texts that I chose were actually the three databases, but I offered them a variety of formats. I want them to get used to them, their own learning styles, and have a little, you know, thinking about their own thinking, a little med a metacognition where they were able to decide, well, do I want to read about it? Do I want to watch a video? Do I want to watch the video all the way through and then go back and, and take notes? So not necessarily the texts weren't chosen, but the formats were chosen uh, very specifically. We do have other databases available. I didn't want to overwhelm them, so I narrowed it down to um, three and they seemed to handle them very well. And I did notice some choose video and some went stri uh, straight to the print. Um, so I do try to offer that in my lessons so that they become more aware of their own learning style. Talk about the standards targeted in the lesson. What do you do to make the lesson reflect the full intent of that standard? Can you repeat the question, the second part? What did you do to make the lesson reflect the full intent of that standard? Uh, so there were several standards addressed, uh, all Common Core as well as the ISTE standards for technology for the students and AASL standards as well. Being the library media specialist, I have a lot of standards that I have to address. So um, obviously they were doing a short research project. They were gathering pertinent information. They were focusing uh, the information they were looking for strictly on the questions they were asked. Um, I didn't want to have them ask the questions today because that really wasn't what the focus of the lesson was. It was more about them looking at for the information that was pertinent to the research. Um, I had them collaborate to share their information. You know, I tell them all the time, apart we're smart, together we're brilliant. So I, I foster that uh, collaboration all the time. Um, I absolutely wanted to have text-dependent questions. The kids I didn't think would have all that much background knowledge. Uh, some of them did, so I also wanted them uh, to include that standard of getting their background knowledge. Um, can we stop for a second? Sure. All right. 
through our sharing of uh, information that was gathered in the collaboration, the kids practiced their speaking and listening skills. You know, I'm trying to foster. You listen to one another. There was a lot of building upon each other's ideas. Um, some kids went beyond the question, which I was happy about. You know, they not only found out where Elvis lived and was born, but when he moved and, you know, all kinds of different details for each of the questions. So there were a multitude of um, standards being addressed. They had to know how to navigate back and forth, how to pause and take notes. We did a little note taking, organizational uh, skills in their notes. Um, yeah, so there were a multitude of standards being addressed. Which of the core action indicators do you think this lesson best exemplifies and why? Let me look. I'll pause this for a second. Okay. Um, I was sure to, to address all the core actions, but I think the one that I most heavily focused on was core action three, uh, differentiating and allowing all students to be engaged in the work, uh, which comes in with the different formats and um, you know, being able to determine for themselves which format they're going to be using to gather the information. Um, I also allowed the kids to be able to sit where they want, which I don't always do, but as the year is progressing, I'm giving them a little more um, freedom and decision making. And I, you know, they're aware that they're coming here to work and they have to choose wisely. And I think they did a really good job today with me not telling them who to sit with. And I, I also wanted them to work independently for most of the time. They do an awful lot of partner work. So today I felt we're moving more towards independence. So um, core action three was the differentiation in that they had the independent time and the collaborative time at the same time and the ability to use uh, their own knowledge of themselves as learners. We're interested in how the shifts required by the CCSS are being incorporated into your instruction. Mm -hmm. Discuss how this lesson illustrates the shifts required by the CCSS. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I plan a lesson, I have the instructional practice guide sitting next to me so that I'm sure to address all the shifts. So uh, this lesson uh, did contain content rich, rich nonfiction with, uh, with the databases that I made available to the students. Um, the second shift, which requires text dependent questions, uh, I formulated the questions knowing that they were answerable using all three of the databases. The phone. Should just take it off the hook. Sorry. That's all right. Do you mind if we start that? Not, a, not at all. Okay. I'm going to take it off the hook. Both of them. That's uh, okay. Did you want to pick it up from the top? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're interested in how the shifts required by the CCSS are being incorporated into your instruction. Discuss how this lesson illustrates the shifts required by the CCSS. Um, when I plan a lesson, I have the instructional practice guides sitting next to me so that I'm sure to include all the shifts. Uh, I become much more conscious of doing that in my lessons. So this lesson was based in content-rich nonfiction, which were the databases. And we had an encyclopedia, uh, a video database, and um, actually we had two encyclopedias. Um, so I made sure that we had those. Um, I was careful to formulate text-dependent questions, which I knew could be answered using all three. Maybe not just one, which was also purposeful. I wanted to be the kids to n recognize that they can't answer every question using just one source. And one second. Oh, and the academic language. I'm always encouraging them to use academic language. So there are certain words that they know I'm expecting to hear, like reliable, like sources, like unreliable. Um, uh, we should have talked about verifying, I guess I shouldn't talk about what we should have talked about, but verifying their information using two different sources. So um, I, I'm very conscious of incorporating the shifts into my planning. How did you teach the content of this lesson prior to the CCSS? What's the same and what's different? Hmm. Uh, what I would say is the same is keeping in mind the learning styles and the multiple intelli intelligences within the room. So I would prob probably have included different formats of the learning, but I'm not quite sure that I would have been as conscious of them as I am now. Um, I'm not quite sure that things would have looked differently a year ago when I was planning this lesson. I just am more thoughtful about my lessons. Maybe I would have partnered them up 
you know, more purposefully, but I, I'm really trying to get them to be more independent as well and to be able to use the sources on their own and be more trusting in themselves as learners that they can do it. They don't need someone holding their hand or partnering with them all the time. So just more conscious of uh, the requirements. Student engagement is crucial to the work of the CCSS. We want to understand how you ensured that all students had the opportunity to productively engage in the work of the lesson. How did you support all students in working with grade level text? For example, how did you provide scaffolding for students below grade level so they can read grade level text? Mm -hmm. The databases that I selected um, do come in a variety of grade levels. So if a student um, goes to a database, they can actually choose the grade level that they would prefer, or if they go to one and they think it's a little too difficult or even a little too easy, they have the, the uh, flexibility to go up or, or down in reading level. Um, as far as engagement, I purposefully showed them a video to get them engaged. Um, I purposely played the music so that they could hear it and be a little more entertained, I guess, while they were working. Just try to make it as fun and engaging as possible. I never stand still when I'm teaching. I'm, I'm up and down all the time. I'm cold calling on kids. Um, so they know that. They, they know that just because your hand is up or down, it doesn't matter if, who I'm going to call upon. Uh, I'm very conscious of the kids that I call upon frequently, and I even say out loud, who haven't I talked to today, just as a re refresher, not only to myself, but to them. Um, I think it's important to encourage them to build upon each other's thoughts. So they really have to be listening to what one another is saying. And I'll even address that by saying, great, who wants to build upon that? Or who can build upon that? Or thank you for going along and building upon what so-and-so just said. So just keeping the discussion moving. And I try to talk as little as possible so that they're more in charge or more in control of what's happening in, in the discussions that we're having. But uh, I, there's just engagement is going to be key. Continuing on to that question, how did you create opportunities for students who are advanced to engage more deeply with grade level or above grade level text? Um, as I said, the differentiation for even for the higher or the lower students came in that they were able to select the format that they were choosing and even within that format the level is, is optional. So within the Encyclopedia Britannica they can choose elementary, middle, or high. And if they're a higher level uh, reader, then they know that they don't have to ask my permission. As long as they're understanding it, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of monitoring that so much. They know that they're here to learn and the learning is on them. So they need to be able to grasp the information that they're reading. I tell them all the time, just don't take notes and not know what they mean. The purpose is to learn. If you're not learning, we're wasting our time. Make sure you're reading something that is, uh, you can comprehend. How do you know the students were able to successfully respond to the text-dependent questions and tasks with precision? Well, by monitoring and walking around, you know, they, they worked quietly and independently for about 10 minutes. So I had plenty of time to look at every student's work. And I was able to see, you know, who wasn't taking notes and kind of encourage them or guide them and point them in the right direction. Um, in the discussion, I think just about every student that we were, uh, that is in the group had some input in the discussion. Um, clearly some more than others, and that's going to happen. Some kids are going to go more deeply and just comprehend more easily, where some are just going to be able to scratch the surface. But hopefully, uh, through their listening, they're gathering more information by listening to their, their peers and what they've discovered. So. Um, yeah, I forgot the question. <laughs> it, it continues on, okay. so if you want to just pick it up from the next, it kind of all... You're going to be able to like cut and paste this and edit oh, yeah, all this? Oh, yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my stumbling and my mispronunciation of words you're going to fix? Yeah, you don't have to worry <laughs> about it. They'll pull the material that they really want. Okay. Did students acquire the literary skills addressed in the lesson? And then the last okay. part of it is, what did you do for the students who did not acquire the literary skills addressed in the lesson? Well, the literacy skills I wanted to address in the lesson were, were they able to identify information pertaining to the questions? We've been over that, you know, 
many times prior to this lesson that a researcher is looking for the answers to their questions, just not random information. Find what's relevant. And they d all did that pretty much with ease. Some um, were a little slower in getting it onto paper, but when I asked them, were you able to find the answers, they said, oh yeah, I just haven't written them down, or yes, and now I'm going to go back and watch it again or read it again. So, you know, again, that speaks to their knowing their learning style. If they need to watch the video or, or read the text all the way through and then go back, that's fine. It may take a little longer. It may not be as efficient. And hopefully that will come with the development. But if they know that about themselves and they do, again, get the information, I'm really not terribly concerned with um, the time that it takes to get there. Um, eventually, I, yes, I do want them to be efficient. Um, they were able to, you know, find the pertinent information and document it and remember it, and that's exactly what I was looking for. Which behaviors from Core Action 3 did the students best exemplify in this lesson? Opportunities for all students to reach. Um, I think the students were all very good at honing in immediately on the source that they wanted to use first. You know, I had addressed if you want to watch a brain pop video, get headphones, and some got up right away and some stayed at their seats. So they knew uh, right away what was going to work for them. I think they all enjoyed the video watching that, and you know, some started to giggle when they were listening to the music. So I know they were engaged, and I, I did try to differentiate and keep them engaged. And uh, I think they were pretty good at. Uh, knowing what they needed. Great instructors are continuously learning. We want to understand what you celebrated in this lesson and what you would improve upon. Reflecting on the lesson, what worked well and what might you do differently? Hmm. You want me to pause for Yeah. Minute? Um, reflecting on the lesson, what worked particularly well, and what might you do differently? Um, I think what worked really well was the engagement piece. Um, for those 10 minutes where they were working, uh, you could have heard a pin drop, so I know that they were all on task. Um, they were very interested in the topic. I, I think that they had heard of Elvis and they knew about him, but maybe they hadn't seen him before, or maybe they hadn't heard his music, so I think the topic alone was engaging. Um, what I would have done differently is possibly talk more about what they already knew about him. Uh, one thing I say to the kids frequently is bring your knowledge, your prior knowledge with you everywhere. Don't leave it behind. Think about what you already know. We really didn't talk about um, any of the knowledge that they already had or think they had that could have been clarified through the research because I also say, what do you think you already know? And it's because sometimes they are misinformed. They're, they're young children. So um, I probably would have spent a little more time doing that. But um, otherwise, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> this was pretty successful. Thank you. Um, Last question, were there any surprises or unexpected student behaviors or reactions? I don't think any of the uh, behaviors or reactions were unexpected. I ac actually expected a little more enthusiasm than I got, um, which actually surprised me. I saw some of them moving in their seats when we were watching the video or listening to the music, but uh, you know, yesterday I had a group of kids that were dancing while we were watching the video. So you never know, it's just, uh, the chemistry of the group, I guess. But I was expecting a little more enthusiasm, but at least outwardly. But uh, um, I think everything contributed to um, the lesson and uh, reaching the expected outcomes that I was hoping for. Was it the same group of kids yesterday? Mm -mm. No, it was the fifth graders. So they're all they're a little more lively anyway. Right. <laughs> all right, great job. All right, thank you. Yeah.